Part A. Directions. In Part A, you will hear short conversations between two people. After each conversation, you will hear a question about the conversation. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Now we will begin Part A with the first conversation. Number one. John and his brother seem to have a lot to talk about. Well, they haven't seen each other for quite a while. What does the man imply about John and his brother? Number two. I'm tired of sitting at home. How about a movie? Sure. Why not? What does the woman mean? Number three. Is it better to take the bus to Chicago or to go by plane? The bus is a lot cheaper, but it takes at least twice as long. What does the woman mean? Number four. The red one looks better on you than the striped one does. But the collar on the red one is too big and the sleeves are too long. Where does this conversation most probably take place? Number five. I heard Ted ended up in the emergency room this morning. Is everything okay? He's being kept overnight for observation. What does the woman imply? Number six. Let's practice that dance routine some more, Anne, and see if we can get it right this time. Again? We've already tried it six times. What does Anne mean? Number seven. That seafood restaurant we went to last night is the best in town. Isn't it, though? What does the man think about the restaurant? Number eight. Do you want to go to the party? Well, it doesn't start until eight, and I have to get up early tomorrow. What does the man imply? Number nine. Kate wants us to pick her up at the airport at 10.30. Oh, so she did make her connecting flight in Boston. What had the man assumed about Kate? Number 10. I had to wait 50 minutes to see the doctor. I could have told you that would happen. What does the woman mean? Number 11. I have to turn my paper in late. I hope Professor Smith won't be too unhappy. Well, this is the first time you've ever had to ask for an extension, so I don't expect she'll be too hard on you. What does the man think Professor Smith will probably do? Number 12. Ray certainly has been late for class a lot this semester. That's not like him. 
What do we learn from this conversation? Number 13. My history term paper has to be typed. Shouldn't you type your English paper too? What does the man suggest? Number 14. Do you mind if I use your phone? John's calling his mother right now. What can be inferred from the woman's response? Number 15. Did you hear Jane's presentation last night? How she can be so calm in front of such a large audience is beyond me. What does the woman imply? Number 16. I think I'll sign up for the Biology 101 class next semester. Biology 101? You haven't heard what students are saying about it, have you? What does the woman imply? Number 17. Can you tell me when lunch is being served today? The schedule is posted on the door of the cafeteria. What does the woman imply the man should do? Number 18. I think I'll get Alice a pair of gold earrings for graduation. Are you sure she wants earrings? What does the man imply about Alice? Number 19. Say, this dinner is great. Why did you have time to prepare all of this food? I didn't. I had it delivered. What does the woman say about the food? Number 20. Jane's new job has become more than she can handle. I'm sorry to hear about that. I hope it works out for her. What does the man mean? Number 21. Joe really seems happy today. He's quite pleased with the bargain he got on his new car. What does the man mean? Number 22. I'd like to talk to you about the repairs you made to my television. It still isn't fixed. I'd be glad to look at it again if you can bring it back in. What does the man mean? Number 23. I've got to miss class on Thursday. Can you take notes for me? Sure. I'll be there for the whole lecture. What does the man agree to do for the woman? Number 24. Linda is sure doing well in her science class. She'd better be. I've been tutoring her every day. What does the man mean? Number 25. Could you please shut the door? It's drafty in here. It feels stuffy to me. 
What does the man mean? Number 26. Todd told me he was going to find his own apartment. But he's looked at several nice ones in his price range, and he still hasn't decided to move. What can be inferred about Todd? Number 27. Did you have any luck booking a ticket? The travel agency was closed. I'll have to go back tomorrow. What does the woman imply? Number 28. You must have eaten half a dozen pieces of pizza already. Well, I've only had a couple, actually. But I guess two's probably enough. What does the man imply? Number 29. I'm going to buy a tape of jazz music this afternoon. Not another one. What does the man imply? Number 30. Didn't I just see Elizabeth? I thought she said she'd be out of town this week. Oh, no. That was last week. What does the woman imply? This is the end of Part A. Go on to Part B. Part B. Directions. In this part, you will hear longer conversations. After each conversation, you will hear several questions. The conversations and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Now we will begin Part B with the first conversation. Questions 31 through 34. Listen to two friends on a hiking trip. I can't believe that we climbed Blue Mountain in only two hours. Look, you can see half of Star Lake from up here. The only thing that puts a damper on this view is the bugs. They are swarming around me. It must be those tiny little black flies. Wait, don't move. You have a beautiful butterfly on your back, an orange and black one. A butterfly? Are you sure it isn't just a moth? No, it's a butterfly. Butterflies have rounded antennae, and when they're sitting still, their wings are outspread. Moths are different. They have finely pointed antennae, and they fold their wings more tightly against their backs. When did you become such a nature watcher? Just get it off me so that I can move. The black flies are starting to bite me. Okay. Hang on just a second. I want to take a picture of this butterfly before it gets away. You know, you're lucky that it isn't a caterpillar. If it were, it could tickle slightly or even give you a rash. Though if you think about it, this butterfly once used to be a caterpillar. I remember this from grade school. Metamorphosis, right? After the caterpillar hatches from the egg, it goes through two more developments before becoming an adult, the larva and the pupa stages. That's right. In the larva stage, the caterpillar attaches itself to a branch by spinning silk from its head. In the pupa stage, it lives in a cocoon and develops into an adult butterfly like this one. Right. Pretty incredible when you think about it. But the view up here is incredible, too. Let's get going. Is the butterfly gone yet? Ah, uh, oh, yeah. There it goes. See? Number 31. What is this conversation mainly about?
Number 32. According to the woman, what is one way in which butterflies can be distinguished from moths? Number 33. What bothers the man about black flies? Number 34. What happens to caterpillars during the pupa stage? Questions 35 through 38. Listen to a telephone conversation between two students. Jones Residence, Mary speaking. Hello, Mary. This is Ted. I just called to see what you're up to. You weren't in English class today. You almost never skip class. Didn't you hear your alarm? Actually, I needed to go to a doctor's appointment. Oh, I'm sorry. What's wrong? It's not serious. They said that I have anemia. It's actually quite common among women. Isn't that a condition in which the blood is deficient in red blood cells? That's it. And it means that I have to eat more foods high in iron, like beef liver and spinach. Some cereals are iron-fortified as well. Yuck. Can't they just give you some pills? The doctor did give me iron pills to take every day, and those should help too. They'll check my blood eight weeks from now to see how well I'm responding to the treatment. Until then, you'll have to eat lots of cold cereal, like Cheerios? I guess so. I need to have 18 milligrams of iron a day. Even though I hate cereal, I guess I'll have to stomach it. I do hope that you feel better soon. Oh, I almost forgot. I was supposed to give you some handouts from Professor Smith. Would you like me to drop them off at your place? Thanks. I'd appreciate that. Did we have any homework? We're supposed to read Milton's Paradise Lost up to page 245 and write a short reaction to it in our journals. Okay. I'd better get going to read up. See you next class. Number 35. Why did Mary miss class? Number 36. What is wrong with Mary? Number 37. What does Mary have to do? Number 38. What did Bill almost forget to give Mary? This is the end of Part B. Go on to Part C. Part C. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear several talks. After each talk, you will hear some questions. The talks and questions will not be repeated. After you hear a question, read the four possible answers in your test book and choose the best answer. Then, on your answer sheet, find the number of the question and fill in the space that corresponds to the letter of the answer you have chosen. Remember, you are not allowed to take notes or write in your test book. Now we will begin Part C with the first talk. Questions 39 through 42. Listen to the following talk given by a pet store owner. Once you have decided to share your life with one of our cats, you must decide whether you want an alley cat or a pedigree cat. Let me explain what those terms mean. An alley cat is one with no special breeding or ancestry. 
It is just a common cat whose parents are of mixed background. This type of cat, unfortunately, often goes homeless and has to hunt for food in the garbage cans found in alleys. And that's how it got its name. A pedigreed cat, on the other hand, is a purebred feline whose ancestry has been recorded and whose history can be traced back several generations. We sell both kinds of cats here, our pedigreed cats, of course, being the more expensive of the two types. But both types of cats can turn out to be perfect pets. Number 39. Who is the speaker probably talking to? Number 40. According to the speaker, what is an alley cat? Number 41. What does the term breeding mean in this talk? Number 42. According to the speaker, what do the two types of cats have in common? Questions 43 through 47. Listen to the following remarks from a history lecture. I spoke yesterday about the construction of ancient Viking ships. Today I'd like to discuss the trans-ocean voyages that the Norse made in these open boats, voyages made without compasses or charts. Somehow the Vikings managed to get across the North Atlantic and back home again. Although the shortest distance between the coast of Norway and Greenland is about 900 miles, the Vikings preferred to take a longer route south of Iceland and thereby avoid pack ice. This was a voyage of well over a thousand miles. How did Norse sailors find land after days of sailing out of sight of land? Well, experienced sailors used the relative position of the stars to help them navigate. The sun's position could also be noted, but it moves across the sky and its position alters a little every day, so it was not easy for the Vikings to use. However, even when out of sight of land, an experienced sailor could find information. As there are landmarks on land, so there are at sea. Whales gathered in large numbers to feed at an area half a day's sail south of Iceland. Migrating birds on their annual flight were also helpful because they always followed the same route. So, geese flying between Britain and Iceland were of particular use to the Vikings. One Icelander also took ravens with him, releasing them until one day they didn't return. He followed their direction and found land. In 900 A.D., ingenuity had to take the place of technology. Number 43. What is the main topic of the talk? Number 44. What did the speaker talk about yesterday? Number 45. Why didn't the Vikings take the shortest route between Norway and Greenland? Number 46. How were whales helpful to the Vikings? Number 47. What can be inferred about Vikings from the talk? Questions 48 through 50. 
Listen to a talk given in a nutrition course. Now, if I remember correctly, last class we spoke about gardening and how to get the best nutritional value out of it. You all gave me excellent suggestions in your journals, and I have made comments in them too. I will give your journals back to you at the end of class today. In your journals, you mentioned how the design of the garden and the timing of the harvest are very important. Today, let's look more closely at the vegetables that we are going to plant in the garden. For example, green snap beans are known to contain twice as much vitamin A as does the yellow variety. Actually, soybeans, which I know that some of you have already indicated a distaste for, are far better for you than both green and yellow beans. Soybeans are a very rich source of vitamin A, and they contain 10% vegetable protein as well. For those who are not bean lovers, there is still hope. I would suggest cauliflower, broccoli, and cabbage to you. Broccoli is better than cauliflower in that it contains 40 times more vitamin A and has more vitamin B and C, too. Finally, Small cabbages are rich in precious vitamin C. Vitamin C, by the way, is a great agent against disease and stress. I know that you are all preparing for final exams, and stress is a factor for you these days, so I thought that I might mention that. Number 48. What is the main topic of this talk? Number 49. Why are soybeans so important? Number 50. Why do you think that the speaker mentioned the importance of vitamin C 